Hello and welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and this is a podcast about knitting, about knitwear design and about anything else uh, creative I feel like sharing in these little episodes. I was actually not planning to record today. Um, I was recording uh, some bits for my house journal that is a different little series I'm doing on this channel where I share our progress of making our home, our house into a home and um, I was filming some bits in the kitchen and I just thought I might as well sit down and talk a little bit and show you what I've been knitting on. So this would be a shorter episode, I think, um, because I only have one thing to share, but I actually finished, kind of finished uh, a design I'm working on. So I have that to show you. And I wanted to talk a little bit about Easter traditions here in Denmark, um, because we have some very specific traditions that are, I think, uh, traditional for Denmark, so you might not know about them. And I think they're quite nice. Um, I was, uh, we were doing some of it yesterday and I just thought this, that might be fun to talk about today. So um, what else to say, spring has arrived. I think today is the first day in quite some time where we have uh, above 10 degrees um, Celsius. So. I'm really happy. I'm wearing short sleeves. It's quite warm inside the house. The sun is shining. Uh, I want to go out in the garden, but I just thought since I had the camera down here, I had made myself look kind of presentable because when I'm in the garden, I don't always look <laughs> that presentable. I thought it was a good idea to sit down and chat a bit. So it might not be very structured. I might talk a bit in all directions, but I generally do that on this uh, podcast. So I hope you don't mind. I wanted to show you a little tradition we have in Denmark that's quite special. It's called Gegebrev and uh, it is a tradition we do leading up to Easter. We send these little letters uh, out in the mail. They are just regular paper. You can make them very fancy. Some people cut them out with um, cutting knives and everything. We normally just cut them with scissors. We fold the paper. So you fold the paper up. Uh, let me see if I can show you. On this one, for example, you fold it several times and then you make your cuts along the edges. And then when you open it, it has this uh, design on them. And you have to include a little snowdrop in the letter. So leading up to the time when we have, we send it out, we go out and pick some snowdrops and we press them. Uh, snowdrops in Danish are actually called Vintergek, Vintergekka, which means winter joke or little a fool, winter's fool maybe and it is because they kind of show you that the winter is over but maybe not and it's the same with these letters they're called gegebreo which means like letter joke joking fool's letter joke letter i don't know exactly how i would translate it um, so the whole idea is that you write a little poem on the letter we have some specific ones we always write the same ones more or less and then you sign your name in dots and you send it to someone that you like or don't like, but normally it's a friend. And this person has until the Sunday of the first Sunday of Easter. I think it's called Palm Sunday. And if they guess who sent the letter before, then this person owes them a chocolate egg. So if I sent this out to a friend and they guess that it was me, I owe them a chocolate egg. But if they don't guess it, they owe me a chocolate egg. So. If I'm good at the disguising my handwriting and uh, making it a little bit difficult to guess, I might receive some chocolate eggs and the other way around. If they guess it, then they would receive one. And yeah, so we just write these little poems. On this one, I wrote one that I really like. I can try to read it in Danish. Uh, I don't know if I can translate it, but I can try. It's in winter gek, in summer na, in fool for uden vinger. En lille ven, som har dig kær, en kærlig hilsen bringer. And it means uh, a snowdrop, a summer's fool, uh, a bird without its wings, a little friend who uh, holds you dear, a loving um, message sends or something like that, or brings to you. So I, I just I think it's so much fun to make these. And I think it's a traditional Danish thing so i thought it was fun to explain it and show you 
Um, if I had more time, I would go all into making these beautiful, intricate letters. I remember doing that in school when I was a kid, like drawing them out first and then cutting the paper and trying to make snowdrops out of paper. Some people are really good at it. Uh, but I just think it's nice that everyone can do it in a very easy way. And it's a fun little activity to do with children, like painting eggs or something like that. We also do that. But um, yeah, I just think it's a lot of fun to make these little letters and to press flowers and to just take a little time to enjoy spring while it's here. And this year it's a perfect time for for, for snowdrops. Uh, they just finished flowering, I think, a week ago maybe. So it uh, we picked them a few weeks back and that was just perfect timing. Mm. So I want to talk a bit about some knitting as well. Uh, we, I, we, me, just me, no one else helped me here. I've been knitting away on this beautiful cardigan. Uh, I just blocked it yesterday, dry, dried so quickly because finally it's getting warmer. Uh, so I just blocked it. I showed it on Instagram, I think yesterday, or was it the day before? And it was all like, you couldn't see the cables. I have my swatch here. So I knew it was gonna look nice, uh, but you couldn't see the cables and uh, like you couldn't see them properly. So, but I still shared them because that's part of the fun with the, um, with these things. So I will try to stay put in this episode because I have the camera next to me. Um, and I know when I get close to the camera, the sound, yeah, it's not so great. I don't have the camera, the microphone on the camera because then it picks up on the focusing sound. So I don't want that. <laughs> it's a lot of trial and error with finding a good setup. Um, so I'm going to try to show the little clips of uh, of the cardigan up close and then talk uh, behind it just uh, so it's a bit easier to hear me because it's quite annoying when you do. I, I spend time setting up everything and then I realize the sound is off when I go to edit the video. So um, I've been working on this uh, cardigan for a while now, but it's really fun to knit on. I love knitting cables. It has these beautiful cables uh, with bubbles in the middle that um, goes down the front and the back. It. I tried this construction. I talked a lot about it where I do the, I think it's called English tailored shoulder. Um, and the only issue with that was that it was really hard to line up the two cables on the back. Maybe I should have started the one on the back where it was closed because it's like one fabric goes down and the other one kind of goes that way. <laughs> so I tried many different versions. I actually re the back, uh, the front panel a few times, figure, like the, the beginning of the front panel, not the whole thing, but just trying to figure out how to get the shoulder and the, everything to line up nicely. I think this is what I ended up with looks really nice, but uh, it's always a bit of a, um, I hate when I regret something once I finish uh, the garment. So I don't want to make any, have any regrets once I finish because then I'm not going to change it. So, and I want this to be a design that I'm 100% happy with. So I did some changes back and forth, but I think it's a lot of fun to make this construction. Right now, the neckline is quite open because um, I need to make a button band and that always pulls things back in a little bit. So what is missing right now is the button band. Um, and I have to seam it up uh, on the sides and then the sleeves. And the reason I haven't seamed the sides yes, ye yes, yet, um, and I guess I want to do that. And I really love seaming sides with mattress stitch uh, is that I need to figure out how deep I want the armholes to be. And until I have that I, I just need to look at it carefully again, then I can go in and seam up the sides and pick up for the button band. I made a really deep V neck uh, based on a cardigan I have that I love very much. I like the relaxed fit of a deep V neck. So um, this V neck is maybe down till here instead of up here. And I just, uh, yeah, I just prefer having a little bit a deeper v-neck um, so yeah i i'm really happy with how it looks after i blocked it it's uh, very 
it has this very rustic uh, grandpa cardigan vibe i love the dark colors um definitely there's definitely a change in the if you watched my last episode i talked a bit about it uh, that i swatched with one skein and then i bought some more but they're not the same dialogue and this one is more green and this one is a bit more brown oh i can hear cat calling let me just open the door so she's not gonna be too frustrated the catty cat hello hey it is in here sometimes she's it's so funny, I have a boy and a girl cat, uh, they're brother and sister, and she is the very independent, kind of very catty cat. Can we see her? Yeah, yeah. Did she hi? She's a very much a cat's cat with the... She won't sit for long, no. There she goes. And the other one, he is a big fluffy guy who just loves to sit on me for hours on end. I think he's sleeping somewhere, so he's not coming right now, but... He's just very much a cuddly cat. Um, so it's really funny for me to have these two very different cats. Um, and she comes to say hello sometimes. So uh, I think, did I say everything I wanted to say about the cardigan? Uh, I was talking about the dialogue. I think that they are quite different. Um, I'm also uh, excited to see once I put on the neckband that will pull things in a little bit and I seam it up if I made it wide enough. I wanted it to be quite boxy, um, but uh, when I was doing the shoulder drop on the back that has this, uh, you can see it, it kind of goes down. I was getting a little nervous that it would go too much, too far down, but I think I didn't have to worry about that. It was just the first time I played with this kind of construction. So I hope everything is good because I don't want to unravel everything and re-knit it so yeah um it is looking very promising i just hope i don't have to make any changes that's always one of the parts uh, when you do um yeah when you do these kind of things and then i also hope i have enough because this color is very different from the um, from the color that i use now that very different colorways so i hope like it's the same colorway but they're different enough that i won't be able to use the skein i have so i might have to order another skein now so they don't run out of that dye lot um, yeah i can't wait to wear it i think i will wear this all summer i just found the other one he's so heavy and so big this is booster he's a uh, the cat uh, that you might have seen on my story sometimes because he has some issues but he's doing well he's just a big goofy boy that's a push push mm. i will let him down or maybe he will stay he will stay so <laughs> he's just lying on my dress he's so heavy um yeah you won't be able to see him but he's down here I think that was it for today's episode. It's just a short one. Uh, we are on Easter holiday, but all, all the kids, both the kids are with uh, friends today and having play dates. They are getting so big and now they're having play dates. And it's just, it's kind of funny for me because yeah, it's like we get more time back, um, except from all the time we spend uh driving them different places but um, yeah they're starting to have play dates and it's it's really nice it's, it's starting the older one has had them for a while but the young one he's five years old and he just started you know going to friends houses and so on uh, wanting to do it a bit more uh, and then we're going to see family during the holidays so this week not this week is a kind of a holiday, spring break week in Denmark, and we decided just to stay home uh, and work on the garden. It's been really lovely weather, a little bit cold, but today is a lot warmer, as I said. So we will go out in the garden and the cats, they really love when we spend some time out there with them. Ah, push, push. Before I go, I almost uh, forgot to say that I have uh, released my Pericon sweater the one you have seen in my previous episodes. Um, I released it on, when was it? Friday? And yeah, it's out in the world. And of course, it. I managed to release it just as spring arrived. And 
Uh, I just hope that when fall comes, uh, a lot of people, people will want to knit it. I know some people knit on big sweaters in the summer, but I can definitely tell that it was a bit <laughs> late in the year that I released it. But it's okay. Um, I still have been, everyone was so kind on my pictures and uh, it was a lot of fun. I took them in front of our uh, barn or stable um, and it has uh, old uh, chalk paint that is coming off which looks really nice on pictures, uh, very yellow and spring-like. Um, and I started the testing of the flower shawl I showed in my last episode, uh, and it should be in testing, I don't know, for a month or something like that. And then hopefully I can release that. That would be a perfect spring summer project because I think, feel like shawls are a little more easy to work on even when the weather gets warmer and you can wear them. Um, yeah, on a chilly summer night over your shoulder. So that one has started. And then I think I should cast on something else as well. I think it will be a shawl because I like to have a few different projects going, but I've been really loving working on this cable cardigan. Um, so, and then I must say, because I always get questions about it, uh, the brioche cardigan that I've shown you as well, that one will be one of my next ones also going into testing. I just need to, finish up a few things on the pattern and then hopefully I can get that one started. So lots of things happening and um, I just really, I feel so happy that spring is here and ready for another year of spending a lot of time outside. And um, I hope wherever you are that spring has arrived or if you're on the other side, <laughs> down under that, um, that you are ready for winter and you enjoy a more cozy fall um, vibe mm, and I wish you all a happy holiday and I see you in the next one. Bye!